hello you, welcome to Geekism, you join me back here in Pinewood Hills uh, in Planet Coaster. So this is the episode where we get stuff done, son. Um, we do, we get through quite a bit in this one. I have uh, I was not very well at the start of the week, I had to take a day or two off work. Um, this is my pay pack, it's going to be a little bit light this month, but it does mean I got to play Planet Coaster quite a bit, so you know, every cloud and all that. Uh, first thing we're doing is, uh, most of the work we're doing today is going to be around the wooden coaster, so uh, that, that, uh, that Mike, uh, Elixir, uh, N7, whatever you want to call him, very kindly uh, built for us in the last episode, so... Uh, we're starting off with a pretty large midway area using these awesome midway buildings that are on the Steam Workshop. Uh, they're made by Ruble Trillions, a fantastic creator. I mentioned it before on the channel, I know. Uh, it does some really, really great stuff, especially uh, these midway games. So these are all um, individual little buildings. You can just plunk them down and they're good to go. Uh, they don't actually do anything. They just, uh, they, they're just look at. Um, but, you know, they're, they're absolutely fantastic. But what I wanted to do here was really create like a, a strip, a midway strip. So um, so I'm basically lining them all up and gutting them a little, so basically getting rid of the roofs and the backs there and sort of dropping them all into place. It's a little bit of a bodge this to be honest with you, you know, they're all still separate buildings and I'm going to kind of place a building over the top of them which will become the roof and the back wall but um, you know once it's done you really can't tell. I think it actually works out really quite nicely. And um, so it's a case of robbing the colours. The colours I've gone for here are the same as the uh, coaster station that we built in the last episode. Again, I mentioned it then as well. Um, you know, one thing I've really noticed in these British parks is that uh, the midway, it's very rarely just midway. It's always themed around whatever it's near. So uh, so here, although the theming is pretty light on the coaster, I did want to carry over a little bit. So the, uh, the, you know, the wood colour is the same, the roofing is very similar and all things uh, like that. Might end up renaming some of these a little. I think Basket Toss is okay. I know one of them is called Ski Ball. Ski Ball being a pretty big thing over in the States. It isn't a big deal here. We have that game. We have the rolling the balls up into the holes. It, it is Ski Ball. But I just don't really think it's known by that term in this country. So uh, suggestions what, what a British park would call Ski Ball, please, in the comments. That'd be good. I'm going to be asking you for a lot of little uh, things to help me out in this episode, by the way. So make notes ready for your comments. Uh, please just don't just comment first or you know great you know let me know stuff talk to me chat to me talk to me uh, right here we go we're uh, here carrying on the uh, the color of the uh, the lights there um, along the front and then just filling in the little gaps here on the uh, on the roof sections it's gonna be nothing major you know this is quite a simplistic building um, but I think it, uh, it turns out really quite nicely all laid together uh, we're kind of we kind of real finish off this area now there's an opening at the back and that's going to be for one of a few things, okay? My original idea was it was going to be for the Matterhorn or Weisshorn or whatever it's called, the new flat ride we're getting in 1.4, which is going to be in about four days' time, I think, when this comes out. Um, my other idea was going to be a train station and have a train that goes further into the park. My other idea uh, is to have a second Woody as like a little version of this one, you know, like a little uh, pre built. Um, you know, fa fabricated woody that can go with it, and uh, I'll talk about that more in a moment. One thing I wanted to mention here is you'll see that we've called this the Tiki Cheeky Prize Walk. Okay, uh, the reason I've done that is because we're going to build a Tiki Cheeky restaurant to the left here. It's, well, not a restaurant. It's going to be a um, oh, is it QOS? I think is the term. Uh, you know, like a stall where you can get some food. Uh, one thing that parks seem to do quite a bit in this country, and also just uh, like councils and stuff do it quite a lot as well. So. Um, that they allow a company to come in and they say you're welcome to come and sell your goods here but in return you've got to you've got to give us a little bit of something something uh, so here uh, pinewood hills has said to tiki cheeky which is a massive chicken company uh, that do sun fried chicken all over the country uh, they said you can open a tiki cheeky stall uh, in the park uh, but in return we want you to maintain this midway area okay so you can brand it up you can do what you like with it but it's going to be your job to look after this okay and i've had a look into it it seems to be this is how a lot of brand deals are, are, are worked in uh, in smaller parks and also uh, like i say outside of theme parks just in general a uh, lot it's kind of like how life works like there's um uh, there's a 
there's a thing definitely in, in the in the northwest at least i'm sure it's probably nationwide as well that if a new supermarket opens it has to do something for the community as well so uh, on the car park it will probably have like a community center or something there next door to it so that kind of idea yeah you can have your restaurant here but in return we want some of your big books to to look after something for us so here it's the uh, tiki cheeky restaurant and then uh, the tiki cheeky midway as well uh, to the point where you know even there are rides in the uk that are themed around uh, a brand or something like that uh, for instance um like uh, a blackpool that used to be the pepsi max it's the, just the big one now the, the brand uh, ran out the deal ran out but it was the pepsi max when it first opened uh, the tango ice blast or was originally the playstation you know brand deals uh, are quite a big thing for smaller parks because it's an easy influx of cash so it's probably something you'll see quite a bit in this park it's something we'll probably carry on uh, a few places so here we go we're uh, filling in a little bit of a uh, back lot here we don't do more i'm doing most of the back lot off camera to be honest with you because it's not the most interesting thing to see uh, the same sort of thing over and over again swabs of concrete and a few bins and a, and a, and a door uh, but one thing i did want to leave this in for is that uh, this is going to have its own separate little back lot this um this shop uh, so that uh, staff tiki cheeky staff can come in and they're not going to be uh, able to access other areas of the park and that's another thing that i've noticed in uh, the uk in the seasonal parks is that a lot of the restaurants and things in seasonal parks the staff will come in from uh, from local uh, restaurants and then at the end of the season they'll go back to all the local restaurants i was talking to a guy who worked in burger king in blackpool pleasure beach and i said what do you do for you know over the four months a year when the park's not open he said oh i just work in the burger king down the road so um these wouldn't be park staff that work in this tiki cheeky there would be tiki cheeky staff and they would have uh, limited access to the back lot of the park so that's why we've got a separate tiny little back lot there just for uh, just for the tiki cheeky staff uh, you'll notice i was using the uh, the barrel planter little uh uh, tip there for, for making staff uh, for making guests not walk through um, we are getting official ways of doing that in 1.4 just watch the live stream and we're getting a uh, um, uh, like a barrier and a, uh, a curb and, and things like that that we can place in uh, they work exactly the same as bar plants they're basically objects that have collision uh, but it's nice that they've uh, acknowledged that and added them in talking to 1.4 um, they've kind of uh, opened up the scenarios this uh, literally i've just watched the stream and then come to record this so they've showed us the scenario editor it is massive it is really huge like really shocking the amount of detail you're allowed to go into with these things um you know you can add uh, multiple entry points that people can walk in from you can um select how often a ride's going to break down you can, there's just there's so much little bits of stuff it's really quite impressive actually uh, it gives me very high hopes of customization in the future of the game our scenario is something we're going to be doing much with on the channel I, I really don't know i'd like to hear your thoughts on it there's a few ways i can go about it i can maybe have a look at making a few of my own scenarios uh, that you guys can have a play or maybe you could uh, you could send scenarios to me that i can have a play with as well it's been a while since we've done any proper let's play content for planet coaster um but you know i don't want to just make uh, make cheap content necessarily so you know let me know what you'd like to see i, I really would like to see whether you, it's scenarios are something you'd be interested in in seeing on the channel to some extent uh, alongside this sort of uh, uh, highly detailed uh, what the head you might call it um uh, model train set style building uh, i realize that i spelled sources wrong there by the way i do i think i don't fix it on the light on the on the uh, video here but i do fix it uh, later on don't worry about that so we're adding a fence in here now uh, to kind of cap off this area. We do a little bit of greenery behind it as well. We had a few more pines on our slight hill. So you can all stop moaning about Pinewood Hills not having pines or hills. Uh, one thing I wanted to do here is rather than just having a plain fence, um, I wanted to decorate it a little bit. Uh, so this area, you know, it's completely funded by Tiki Cheeky. They're the guys who look after it. They're the ones who are going to keep this area clean and painted and all that. It's all part of their licensing deal. So they would do something a little bit to kind of tie this area in. And uh, I thought Tiki Cheeky, you know, it's a little bit sort of... Uh, uh, Mexican or maybe like Puerto Rican or something like that and um, or maybe even Portuguese or something I'm not too sure what it, where it's really sort of uh, themed around I guess it's more sort of Aztec-y with their logos but uh, it very much reminds me of something like Nando's in the UK which is a Portuguese uh, company that make chicken uh, so I thought we'll add some bit of colour on the fence there a bit of sort of bright light uh, bright oranges and reds and things like that and um and again, just sort of make it look a little bit different so that uh, you can kind of tell that this is owned by a uh, an outside company that they're, uh, they're looking after it and maybe spending a bit more money on it than uh, some of the other fencing in the park. 
So we're working on this main strip now, then down by the midway uh, with a few of these lighter trees. Might replace these with one of some of the autumnal ones when we get them. Um, I wanted some of the smaller trees uh, and something that looks a little bit more forced, you know, something that looks a little bit more planted. In the bigger green areas, we've got lots of oaks, we've got lots of pines, obviously, you know, the name's Pinewood, so we've got lots of pines, uh, spruces, things like that. Um, but in these planted areas, I want something that maybe a little bit less natural, so these sort of lighter coloured maples and things like that. Um, you know, still work with the sort of very rustic theme of this area, but uh, but look a little bit more, I don't know, forced, a little bit more placed and things like that. Uh, so here we go, here we are finishing off the uh, the back area. I decided to sort of mess the fence up a little there, something I'll probably go back and do a little bit more on the back area only, so I think that actually works out quite nicely. Uh, next thing I wanted to do is cap this area off here. I was keeping this open. This was originally the queue for the chair plane, but uh, now we move the chair plane to the other side. This area is end up just going to be a nice little bit of greenery, which uh, I think actually works quite nice. We have that wall there following the path down, and then, um, like I say, we just it's a selection of pines and some other uh, you know sort of classic British trees as well, like uh, like that beautiful stoic oak there, and then a little bit of terrain work just to kind of cap that area off. A little bit of rock, nothing major here, you know, it's very sort of low low maintenance and uh, easy to look after and you can't just let it get on with it and it's just a, a bit of a nothing space really. There's a little gap there, I filled it, filled it in with some concrete and I thought, you know what, this needs something here. I was going to originally just put a cowboy stood outside, like uh, like some places have an Indian, uh, you know, a Native American stood outside, which I never really understood. So I was going to put a uh, cowboy, none of them really fit. So instead, I ended up placing one of these little, oops, excuse me for knocking the microphone, these random little, uh, you know, photo points, I guess you would call them. Uh, you see these all over the place, you know, you can get your sticky head in the stocks and there's a sign saying, oh, you know, we visited uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach or whatever, you know. I saw a few of these around. There was a Wallace and Gromit one in the Wallace and Gromit ride. And I thought, you know what? That's a perfect little space for one of those. So uh, the guests can go over there and have their photo taken. They can't, obviously, but you know, if they could, they would. Uh, a little bit more back area work on the Tiki Cheeky here. A few uh, blank signs. Unfortunately, they are light up signs. They glow a little bit at night. I'd rather they didn't, but uh, all the Tiki Cheeky signs are uh, lit up ones. A little bit of. Uh, rear signage there that's the rear of the shop so they wouldn't have spent that much money on it but it is viewable from the path so they had to do something with it so they stuck a little cheap neon on there a uh, little bit of uh, work here because the slope is really funky we know what terrain and path is like when they mix so we get these horrible jarring slopes i thought we'll just fill this in with a little bit of rock work again nothing major this is completely backstage this is more serviceable than it is uh, you know for looks so it's all sort of just green bushes and, and just kind of filling in the space bit of a change now we're moving up to the top area by the arcade and we've just got a few of these little bits of green where um, the pathing uh, just kind of needs filling in basically so did a little bit of work here very simple stuff nothing too uh, too extreme basically some uh, some light theming with a few of um, the tree pieces and then um, I think we try and create a bit of a berm here, but it's quite tricky to do with the terrain because of how, um, how how it doesn't work well next to paths. So I don't think we I think we get the slightest little hill there. Look at, and then we can place in a couple of the smaller trees. Uh, like I say, maybe you know a pine would have been better there, but they're they're, they're pretty big. You know, the, the stuff in this game is big. <laughs> Just something I'm getting bored of saying, but you know, stuff in this game is big. So a few of the smaller trees actually think work quite well there, and then we just do the same here as well. Um, if you want uh, more tips and advice on how to sort of fill in these little gap areas and use paths to make larger um, sort of plaza areas like this, uh, Silverette did a fantastic uh, tutorial on making smooth paths and plazas. I'll link that in the description. It is really well worth doing. We've got our own pathing video on the channel, but it never really talks about plazas that much. Uh, here, there is a small gap in between the two screens here. And uh, one thing I loved was um, in the Sparrow Falls video we did, the little overview, uh, somebody had made these awesome little park map holders. And I thought, oh, the second I saw it, I knew exactly that I was going to rob it and put it in my <laughs> own park. Uh, I've seen a few people use it as well. I know um, Gaming Koala used it on his uh, really good series, Medley Valley. 
great series. Check that out. I'll put a link in the description as well. And uh, he basically said, yeah, I saw it in Sparrow Falls. And I was like, yeah, robbing that. <laughs> so uh, it fits really nicely in this little area here, uh, both physically and also, you know, thematically as well. This is exactly the sort of place you would find them. Uh, the one in Sparrow Falls, all the leaflets are all different colours. Um, I haven't gone for that. I've gone for two different colours. The idea being one is a map and one would be show times, maybe, something like that. Um, to have them all different colours would mean that they're all different leaflets and they wouldn't be. They would be the same leaflet over and over again. So I've gone for two colours just to keep it a little bit more interesting. Um, but yeah, really, they should be um, they should all be one colour or, or one or two colours like we've done here. But yeah, really great little piece, uh, piece of theming. It's one of my favourite things about the Planet Coaster community is that we can, you know, see all these little ideas of people and say, oh, that's really good. I'm robbing that basically you know as long as you credit as best you can like I said I don't know specifically which member of the Sparrow Falls community uh, builds did that but uh, you know that's where I got it from here I'm just I think I'm just looking around admiring my handiwork and then here I'm trying to fill that green bit in I still can't figure out what I'm going to do with it um, yeah we'll keep thinking about it here a little bit of detail on the roof and I don't know what I'm doing here. I can't even remember. Um, nope. No idea what I was doing there. Never mind. <laughs> Moving over a little bit of detail here on this mulch area. And then I think we start working on the other side of this uh, path. Yes, we do. Uh, but first of all, we place our RC boats that we built in a live stream a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that goes in. We also are going to place in the basketball hoop as well that we did uh, just the other day, actually. Well, about a, I don't know, a few days ago when by the time this comes out. Uh, so we're carrying on this fence here again, lengthening it down so as that it follows the path quite nicely there. And then we start work on um, on the queue for the wooden coaster that is named, but I'm going to leave it as a little bit of a surprise. Uh, we'll see in the live action section in a moment what we eventually called the coaster. Um, here there's a very slight slope, so we have to bring those down just a little uh, until it sort of levels off. Which is about there, I think. Yeah, and then we carry it on down. Oh no, there it is. There we go. Uh, and then it levels off there. Good stuff. It actually levels off a little earlier than that, but I, I, I think the fence was a little bit squiff. But I quite like how it's turned out, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, the history in the park and uh, how we can kind of replicate the idea of uh, of there being history in this park and um, it's one thing I do with the wooden coaster, it is named. Uh, the naming suggestion came from somebody on the Discord server. I can't remember who it was, I do apologize. But uh, they sent me a private message with a couple of ideas and one of them really stuck out to me as sounding perfect for a wooden coaster of the era. Okay, so um, it was originally called Roller Coaster. Okay, when they first opened it back in 1949, it was called Roller Coaster and then it was rebranded um, maybe 20 or so years later. I'll show you the full story later on once we put in our billboard here that we're uh, placing in our Pinewood through the years. So um, yeah, the idea here is that it's going to be rebranded uh, about 20 odd years later and also it's going to have a huge extension to the queuing system. So the original queuing system, well, well the originally wouldn't have been a queuing system. Uh, this would have been, uh, like Mike mentioned in the last episode, this would have been a pay ride, paper ride park originally. You'd be able to wander in. There wouldn't be that many people. A lot of people wouldn't have ridden this because it would have been quite scary and new at the time. Um, so you would have been able to just to walk up these steps here and, and pretty much walk onto the ride basically. There would have maybe been a, 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 a a staff member there to sort of feed people in and out and you would have walked through a, uh, a nice little garden that we end up doing a sort of Victorian style uh, flower garden that you would walk through and uh, and ride the ride basically this would have been the original uh, the original setup uh, obviously as the park grew uh, and got bigger then this uh, wouldn't have been an option anymore so it's been closed off uh, it's still open to the public for them to actually walk around the garden uh, but the actual um, uh, stairs themselves now are closed off and they're there purely uh, for aesthetic reasons and then this huge garish horrible cattle pen queue has been added to the other side there um purely form you know a, a function over a, over a looks and it literally does the job of letting people queue up um, I don't think the cattle pen queue that we do is quite finished, although I'm really struggling what to do over the top of it. Um, again, something else I mentioned in the last video, I, from what I can tell, there aren't that many uh, covered queues in the UK. Most most of them just kind of deal with it or, you know, have some tree lining 
uh, to help with the rain. Uh, you know, most rides in the States, the, their, their queues are covered, um, mostly due to the sun, though. It's not it's not a rain thing. It's a, it's, a, it's getting people out of the sun. You know, they use trellising, they use uh, misters, you know, the things that spray uh, water on you to keep you nice and cool. That is not an issue. It's not a concern in the UK. So um, it just doesn't seem to be a thing. I'm, I, I went through some footage that I took from both Blackpool and Alton Towers that I went to both recently, and they just don't, unless the queue is indoors, actually sort of like an indoors queue, um, they just don't seem to have covered queuing. So uh, I've done it open, uh, but it looks a little unfinished. So suggestions on a postcard, please, how we can uh, we can do it. But you'll see in a moment. First of all, uh, we've got to do this uh, this Victorian garden. So this is going to be a, uh, a, a garden area, flower garden, uh, that is going to be still relatively well maintained. This is going to be looked after. This is going to be maybe even like a UNESCO heritage site or something like that. A lot of uh, time and effort is going to be spent on this. Pinewood would employ gardeners to take care of this kind of thing, the, uh, the sort of original uh, gardens and original space in the park. Uh, Alton Towers obviously has its beautiful stately gardens and they have uh, about a dozen gardeners uh, on the payroll who, whose job is just to maintain uh, the flowers. Here I was considering whether or not I could reuse the queue bit and I was like, uh, the, the hedge there from the other side and in the end I just thought, no, I'll just copy it over. It may not be exact, I just don't think it is, but I think overall it actually uh, lines up pretty well and I don't think you'd notice. Sorry for yawning, it's quite late here, it's just gone midnight when I'm recording this. Um, I, uh, like I say, I had a few days off work and it's kind of thrown me schedule, uh, so I'm a little bit all over the place. Okay, here we go. Um, a little bit of topiary again like i said i wanted this to be a really um well kept area not too over the top though i did think about using that topiary arch for a moment but in the end i decided against it because it's just a little bit too much uh, here we're just uh, changing up the queue a little uh, sorry the exit is a little um I need a few benches because people really seem to need a bench when they get off this ride it's not that bad the nose is only about two i think but uh, yeah people need to have a little sit so i'll put a few of them there here we're working on the uh, the Victorian garden. I did a lot of research. I say a lot of research. I looked at about six pictures on on Google. Uh, a lot of research regarding Victorian gardens and how they're sort of put together. Uh, a lot of bushes, a lot of flower bushes, and uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, groups of colour and uh, lines of colour and things like that. And also a lot of very sort of fragrant plants as well. A lot of heather, uh, you know, a lot of thyme and things like that as well. So a lot of herbs in there. So we have these huge um, sort of what are meant to look like heather bushes is here uh, but again sort of big swathes of color uh, keeping it nice and full with it slightly petering out there as it gets towards the uh, the building itself but overall i think it actually works out uh, pretty nicely a little bit of terrain work there with the terrain paints and uh, i think it all looks pretty good now as a big juxtaposition that and that's something i really had in my mind all the way through this was this huge juxtaposition this huge difference between the uh, the beautiful sort of floral gardens and the wooden train st uh, station style structure to this later added on maybe in the sort of 60s or the 70s this huge swathe of concrete and metal and grayness and form and function and utility as opposed to um you know the, the sort of uh, more aesthetic approach of the original design and that's something i really wanted to uh, to get across was this kind of uh, this difference there we go the um it's a little cut there sorry there was a big gap in the uh, in the video so the only thing I don't do on the time lapse here is to place down uh, the signage for the new name. Uh, that's something I'll show you in the live section in a moment. Uh, but here we're just kind of carrying on the uh, the fencing here and basically making it, uh, like I say, a real sort of relatively horrific cattle pen with a uh, with a feeder there. So as if needs be, uh, the main cattle pen can be turned off. And they can just move some rope around and then. Um, and open this section up um, again very standards for cattle penning uh, all of them can usually be closed on and off so a quiet day there midday or uh, you know midweek day or um, you know later in the season if they wanted to they can just close that off with a bit of rope and people can just nip through there and, and get on the rise pretty quickly um, again lots of concrete 
filling all this in there's a little bit of funkiness there look a little bit of green where just the terrain and the pathing just will not play nice at all so uh, i actually end up going back and taking some of those window pieces that i'm using here to carry the uh, concrete on and uh, and basically just covering them up and, and you can notice them but my you know the idea is it looks like it's been you know replaced with a little bit of concrete there's a bit of damage there and it's been filled in or something like that it doesn't in the uh, in the grand scheme of things it doesn't look too bad at all uh, this actually looks quite nice, this sort of large concrete area. Uh, well, I say it looks nice, it looks awful, but it's meant to look awful, you know. Uh, probably end up going back here and placing a few barrels or something, or, you know, a little bit of, um, uh, not theming, you know, the idea of the actual equipment needed for the coaster, so some barrels or tyres or something, I don't know what we've got, what we've got that might work there, but... Uh, yeah, there we go. Right, zooming out and placing in a little bit of foliage, again, lots of pines, lots of spruce. Um, and other sort of uh, British plants and then we have um, we kind of just going to be working and doing little bits of this as we go you know just as we as we spot an area that I feel like could be done and uh, I'll just sort of fill it in here so we place a little bit of a burn there and some uh, terrain paints and a little bit of sort of dead bushing and stuff around the bottom of the coaster that would be tricky to get to you wouldn't be able to get your mower or your strimmer up to there so uh, there we go and then finally we add some lighting um, again, I've said it before, lighting, music, two very cheap ways of theming an area or just sort of like improving the uh, the quality of an area. So we had quite a bit of uh, lighting here that both lights up the trees and then the, uh, the actual coaster itself. And the last thing we're going to do on the time lapse is a small building at the exit of the coaster, which is going to be our on-ride photo building. So we're going to make it a little bit serviceable. There's going to be a, 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 just a memento there. So guests will actually wander over to here. But obviously everything else we build now is going to be purely for show. Uh, it's something I've seen a few people do now. Really great idea. Um, and also it meant I got to have a little play in Photoshop as well, which is again something I'm going to be showing you in the live section in just a moment. Uh, but we build uh, an Onride Photo booth. It's something I'd love to see in the game, I think. Um, uh, I say something I'd love to see in the game. Most likely, if they did it in the game, it would be a box like the Just a Memento there. And um, I actually had a lot of fun uh, creating this myself. So, I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't like to see it in the game. Or maybe I'd like to see just counters in the game. Just a counter with a guy behind it that you can just place there. Although, one thing I did notice in 1.4, uh, in the scenario, but it's uh, they got... Uh, well, actually, they were showing some of the new staff features. You, you can hire staff... Um, and they just wander around and fill in shops. Now, if you can hire those staff and set them to work roast, roasters, like or rosters, whatever they call them, like you can do the security guards and the cleaners, um, you can basically get a staff member and make them stand somewhere. So instantly, you're going to be able to have staff members on all the midway, uh, on this kind of thing. You're going to be able to have a staff member standing with a uh, with a character, you know, for security. That's something I'm looking forward to seeing if we can do. That'll be yeah, that'd be a really nice little uh, touch of realism if we can have uh, a staff member standing around the place. You can currently do it with the Q piece uh, if you're quite clever with how it gets placed, but they stand there and they say no, no, no because the queue's closed. So it'd be nice to have somebody stand there and you know be a little bit more active and a little bit more positive. So uh, here's the building. Then again, uh, lots of wood. Um, on the outside is meant to look like the coaster station still again the same sort of colors the same sort of star wood on the inside is a little bit more modern this obviously would have been a much later addition to the ride this wouldn't have happened in the original 1940s build so the uh, the, the look they're going for here is copacetic it's meant to be uh, you know they, they've gone back and tried to make it look like the original coaster but you know slight modern sensibilities in there has just uh, been put a little bit off so, uh, so like I said, this is for ride photos, but they'd also have a few souvenirs, but we're not going to do a full interior. So they just have a little few bits there they can wheel in and out. And uh, we put on ride photos there. That's going to change the name of the coaster, which you'll see in just a moment. Um, just a memento sign there. And I think that's pretty much us done, to be honest. We'll, uh, we'll cut now to a live section and we'll have a look what it looks like. Right, here we are in the park in, uh, in Tejig Can We have not done this for a little while. Thought we'd have a little look around the new stuff this way. So there's our park, max, uh, park map signs. This bit of green. What do I do with it? Please help. <laughs> and um, then we move on to... Here we go. Here's our, here's our couple of little bits of uh, uh, greenery that we've added to kind of break up this large plaza area. And then over here we have our first uh, sort of photo booth. We'll do a few of these around the place, I think. Uh, that's pretty smart. Although this here needs uh, 
needs needs something to fall onto, so it needs a base. So let's just do that. There we go. Um, so there we go. You'll see now the coaster is called Thunderer or the Thunderer. Uh, there is a reason behind the name. So uh, it was suggested by somebody, like I say, in the um, in the Discord chat. Uh, so I've done a little post about it here, the Thunderer, it was 1949. The Thunderer is a wooden roller coaster that opened with the park in 1949. It was originally known simply as Roller Coaster, until it was renamed in honour of the HMS Thunderer's 50th anniversary in 1961. Whilst parts of the track have been replaced at various points in history, the main structure is still original and is one of the oldest roller coasters of its type in the UK. Dare you ride the Thunderer. And here we've got some original plans for some of the ride's elements uh, with the crossover shown on the left. It was not used, 1944, and then the original ride entrance now no longer used due to increased numbers of people entering the park daily. So here all I did was um, was delete the, the fence that we put in build the walls up a little and then grab a few groups of guests and drop them there because obviously they have no reason to walk there so grab them and drop them in there for the screenshot but i think that turned out quite nicely so yeah um the hms thunder was an actual warship it was used in the first world war and uh, 1961 would have been its 50th anniversary i just thought that was a nice little bit of history a little bit of a reason uh, for the name so uh, so there you go so we've come down here now then this area is pretty much capped off we've got a nice bit of greenery there obviously there will be a fence around the back of this here eventually uh, where the uh, the back lot is and uh, we come down here into Tiki Chiki. this area here will of course be filled with picnic tables as soon as we get them next week i'll be coming in here we corrected sources and uh, there's actually a water shop as well it's Tiki Chiki chicken but also you can get bottled water so we've now got a drinks place in the place got some ketchup and mustard there and uh, a recycling bin and then as we come around here uh, we've got these awesome like i say awesome midways here by uh, by ruble trilliums which has now become the Tiki Chiki prize walk all those here and then this one uh, it was one we made uh, together on a live stream the other day shoot the hoops a basketball hoop there and we um uh, made this in live the teddy bears come from ruble the, you'll see them all over his here uh, the minions we made ourselves i can't say as i'm a massive fan of minions but you do find these things everywhere to be honest on these kind of things so that's that uh, again lots of to do around this area still we're going to have a toilet down here uh, that's going to be a larger gate that's going to open into the backstage area and then here we've got um uh, this bit that we we're working on. i'm going to come out of teddy cam actually so we can have a bit of a better look at it very aware that um uh, we, we're, we're cracking on with time now. I don't really want to go too long with this video. So here we'll have a look at it from this angle. So here is our Thunderer sign. Um, my thinking behind this was that it was originally a water feature that's now since been filled in and put a few plants in it because, again, that's a thing that often happens. And here's our cattle pen queue with um, the juxtaposition of having this beautiful garden next to it that would have been the original queue and obviously we have the thunderous sign there but and the station uh, will originally have had a roller coaster and that is roman numerals there for 1949 uh, these are fogs um fonts again i'll pop a link in the description to those really awesome stuff they are nice and uh, rustic and i've made them purposefully a little bit sort of bobbly and, and rickety and stuff like that and i think they turned out really quite nicely and then finally the photos now i went and did a little bit of work in photoshop so we now have thunderer photos uh, available thunderer the original bone rattling experience with pinewood hills there we go so we have some shots actually on the coaster and then there's also a couple of uh, shots where there's um there's nobody on it it's, it's something i see happen quite a bit where the, the camera's just sort of shot off <laughs> um which i thought was quite a nice touch there we go so you've got those there and then if you want to buy them you can get them there large print six pound or keyring prints two pack for four pound or best fan you can get a large prints and two keyrings for eight quid and there's the till and the little guy hanging out so like i say if we can change him for an actual staff member in 1.4 that would be very very neat i like the idea of that uh, definitely a uh, little bit of work here slightly different fencing pattern here uh, around the back right photos and also i added a, uh, a a transfer track god knows how it would work i i don't think it could work actually but i really want a transfer track so uh, that go underneath the station which is very very uh, um classic for these sort of older woodies it happens quite a bit um but i i don't think it would actually work but i don't really want to change the coaster lows just for that uh, the only other thing we did 
uh, with the coaster off camera was to start a little bit of foliage and rock work around the back here so uh, it's getting there you know we still got work to do but you know you can see it's starting to take shape now it's starting to uh, fill out and wrap around the uh, the trees here and be a little bit more like the woods uh, that the name of the park suggests so thank you so much for watching I'm gonna leave you with a couple of glamour shots and um, uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. Give us a like and uh, and all that sort of stuff. Thanks very much for watching. I'll uh, I'll see you in the next one.